What questions do you ask a low back pain patient? There are four important questions we must ask a low back pain patient because a low back pain can be simple or complicated. And you want to know if there's a complicated problem that you're dealing with. And a lot of this information will come from the history by asking the patient. Then the physician will examine the patient and try to find elements that will support the history given by the patient. To get the history from the patient, you must ask them these important four questions. Do you have an steady gait? And the answer is yes or no. If the patient said his gait is unsteady, then this patient may have a complex problem, an upper motor neuron problem. It means, in addition to his low back pain, a serious problem can coexist, and this problem can be in the neck or really in the thoracic spine. So an MRI of the neck may be necessary here. A patient that feels unsteady gait and low back pain must tell the doctor that he feels staggering or unsteady gait or losing their balance. So in addition to low back pain and the disc problem in the lower back, there is another assault on the spine in a distant area. This assault happens predominantly in the neck or rarely in the thoracic spine. So the MRI will show lumbar stenosis, which will give you the low back pain, but the patient have unsteady gait, then you need to figure out what is in the cervical spine that causes unsteady gait. The second one is bladder and bowel symptoms. You ask the patient, do you have any bladder or bowel symptoms? Because bladder and bowel symptoms indicate coda equina syndrome. The patient may have a serious problem of coda equina syndrome. In this situation, the patient will complain about low back pain, urinary retention, and saddle anesthesia. So what is Coda Aquinas Syndrome? Coda Aquinas Syndrome is when you have a herniated disc, will be central, and it will wipe out all the nerve roots, not just one as in disc herniation. The majority of the nerve roots will be compressed, will be pressured and affected. And some of these nerve roots provide the bladder and bowel. So you want to diagnose this condition early and deal with it early, because if you don't, there will be permanency of involvement of the bladder and bowel. This problem may not recover, even if you do surgery. And people may disagree on when you do surgery. Everybody agreed that you must diagnose it early, but the surgery, is it emergency, you do it now, or is it urgent, you do it within certain hours? And some people think that 48 hours is the cut between getting a reasonable outcome, and beyond that, you don't get a reasonable outcome, especially in bladder recovery. The third question is the pain related to activity. So if the pain is associated with activity and relieved by rest, if the patient said yes, then you need to figure out if this activity is moving the spine or moving the muscles. Because if you're moving the spine and the patient gets pain and the pain is relieved by moving the spine in the other direction, then think of lumbar stenosis. Patient with lumbar stenosis will have pain with extension of the spine, but if they bend the spine, they relieve the pain, and that's called shopping cart sign. But if the pain comes with moving the muscle, like walking, but the pain stops by stopping, then that's probably a vascular problem. In patients with low back pain, especially the elderly, you need to examine the pulses to make sure they don't have vascular claudication. 
you need to obtain a careful history because the vascular and neurogenic claudication can occur together. And the problem with lumbar stenosis, the examination of the patient is basically normal in a lot of patients. So when you examine the patient, you are not going to be able to find a lot of findings there. But what if the patient said the pain is not associated with activity, the pain is constant and not relieved, then you need to think of other things. A pain that's not relieved by rest and is constant may be caused by different problems. One of them is a tumor. And the fourth question, is the pain going to the extremity? Is radiating down to the leg or not? If the pain is radiating down to the leg, that's called radicular pain, like sciatica. If it is not radiating down, that's an axial pain, that's pain in the spine itself. Does the pain go below the knee? That's more indication of a disc herniation. Is the pain going one side, unilateral? That's a disc herniation. But if it is bilateral, both sides, that may be lumbar stenosis. So let me repeat that again. The unsteady gait is a serious problem in the neck. It's creating cervical myelopathy, in addition to the low back pain that the patient complained from. The bladder and bowel symptoms, that is called the equina syndrome. We got to diagnose it early and fix the problem urgently. Is the pain related to activity? Ask if it's activity of moving the spine or moving the muscles of the leg because it can be neurologic collidication or vascular collidication. Or is the pain shooting down to the leg, creating what you call sciatica? That's a disc herniation. Is the pain below the knee and on one side or on both sides? One side is a disc herniation, both sides can be lumbar stenosis. Keep in mind, things can be associated and overlap. Lumbar low back pain may also involve the hip, like hip arthritis and lumbar stenosis. And this problem may be resolved by injection of the hip and figure out which one is more important. Another problem is it a disc herniation or piriformis muscle. Both give the same clinical appearance. So an MRI here may be important to diagnose the disc herniation. I'm not talking about acute low back pain that occurs after somebody left a heavy object or twisted the back. There is a history of trauma here. I'm talking about the patient comes to you in your office that complains of low back pain that's not getting better. Over 90% of the patient with low back pain will get better between six to eight weeks. So these are four important questions you need to ask the patient. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.